I'm talking with Laura and Laura is a one-to-one -one, one and Laura is going to help us understand this very interesting subtype of type one. So Laura, can you tell us a little bit about how you see the one-to-one -one, one playing out in your life? So it's interesting. It's been in stages really recognizing some of the, the way it plays in my life and I've come to understand it as a major driver in a lot of my behavior, both it and its shadow, which is, uh, which has been an interesting discovery. So um, at its most basic level, just to look at the world and want to fix it mm. all the time oh. and perform it and the inability to be content with the way things are, you know, as a one, I, I turn it inside as well, but there's a huge external drive. So in many ways, earlier in my life, it was a source of energy. So a source of energy to be better, to get edu education, to start a career, to drive through on those things and not be complacent about it. And um, so energy and drive, I kind of needed it in my childhood mm -hmm. to get out of the um, childhood that I had. And it had a huge... Um, impact I think at work in many ways in a positive way to reform things that needed reforming to be able to see it very clearly to be able to work and drive toward that but <laughs> the other side, <laughs> which is what we always work with the most um, yes. just this uh, when it's not in balance so um, mm -hmm. just and recognizing some of the shadow parts of that because as a one you want to be good you want to do good and to recognize the shadow part of the subtype, which is just very competitive, um, doesn't work in triangular relationships very well. Oh. Um, to recognize, and this was a hard one for me to recognize because at work I felt like I was always, you know, growing other leaders and doing things to for the betterment of the whole, but to really recognize the competition and to recognize the, um, black and white or more zero sum thinking, which mm. is anathema to me, but it's there. Mm. <laughs> and when right. I look at specific instances, I'm like, oh yeah, that was kind of one-on-one -on -one thinking or um, zero sum thinking. And sometimes the zero sum wasn't just for my better, betterment, but I left myself out mm. completely. So mm. doing it for others, doing this, driving this, this is the quote unquote right thing to do as the one looks at the world, mm. but mm. it's not balanced. And then it comes to more resentment. So all of those mm -hmm. things kind of fed the fixation of resentment. Right. And I think also when I see everything as needing fixing or reforming, I don't see others as complete complex people. Mm. I will react very quickly to something that I think is wrong, mm -hmm. change. And it has affected relationships and it has affected um, um, work and it has affected other more personal relationships because I, mm -hmm. I can stop and wait for the complexity and accept that. And I've been doing a lot of work with polarities too and I've realized that um, integrity and forgiveness is a polarity. Mm -hmm. And I'm into the integrity part big time as a mm -hmm. one and as a mm -hmm. one on one mm -hmm. and I'm not softening it and looking at the other side of that. Yes, that might not be the right thing to do. Yes, that boss may be doing damage to a lot of his or her subordinates, mm -hmm. but it's the forgiveness side too and balancing mm -hmm. it, not just looking at that one thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing um, that more recognition of kind of the underlying aggression, you know, kind of the, mm -hmm. the, um, manifestations of anger and the passion mm. of anger in a one and mm. I think it's on double steroids when it's a one-on-one -on -one, one. Mm, <laughs> right that's really clearly put and, yeah. and the energy that it's taken throughout my life I have to be a good girl I have to be good I have to do the right thing to suppress it to think I'm suppressing it when mm. it comes out in other ways that other people mm -hmm. can see but just to kind of recognize and find different ways to deal with that aggression. So it doesn't just zap mm -hmm. my energy or it doesn't come out in a twisted way and hurt somebody because that used to be the cycle. It would come out in a twisted way and mm -hmm. hurt somebody. And then I would beat myself up because that was not, uh -huh. a good thing. that was bad. That was mm -hmm. not good. instead of really recognizing it as an integral part of me and that shadow and bringing that to the, to the light. 
And I think the other part of it is too, when I start getting down that cycle, there's just the judginess. It's almost uncontrollable. <laughs> so I think, and that's something I judge myself about. And then it starts that cycle again of yes. up because I'm being judgy, I'm not being compassionate enough and I'm not, et cetera. So it's kind of, it's been, especially over the last few years, just bringing that out of the shadow and saying, that is part of me. That is almost a compulsion mm -hmm. sometimes. That is driving the way I look at things and just stopping mm -hmm. and, and recognizing mm -hmm. what it is. So, mm -hmm. Wow. And think, yeah. And I think with one in the one-on-one, -on -one, there, there, there tends to be a clash between that I have to be a good girl and I have to do things the right way and, and for a noble cause mm, mm -hmm. and then that aggression and the anger and all of that stuff is just sublimated and I don't integrate it well. So I think for the last few years, it's been how to integrate that so that it, that it is part of me and it's not leaking out in strange ways and it doesn't start this thing that just feeds my um, ego. Right. And, right. And, and the inner critic. So, right self-fulfilling thing <laughs> right right I let it go unrecognized yeah i love how clear you're being about so many aspects of this subtype and first i mean even just the the positive side like you're saying in the beginning of how how, how much energy you have like you said from the the anger of the one and the one-to-one -one instinct of that it's also kind of a powerful driver um and that it's a it's an energy it, you have used to do world you know that you have you you have created reform you have had a big impact uh but how it's also uh it's also that this aggression uh that and I, and i think this is really interesting about one-to-one -one, you're describing it so clearly it's almost like this inner conflict between i have to be good i can't display this anger and yet it's such a powerful energy and, and it takes the form, like you're saying, of looking out into the world and seeing what can be fixed, what needs reforming and just going for that, you know, and some, and like a compulsion, sometimes not realizing. Yeah. 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 And can you say a little more about, and so, sometimes it said that the one to one, one wants to perfect others and also reform society. Can you give us any some a little more examples about how that's played out for you th those tendencies? So I think um, you know I worked for the federal government for thirty years in a very kind of closed um, environment. So where it played out there was that's not the way to lead. That's not the way to inspire people. We have so many super intelligent, capable people, and I just saw managers and leaders just ruin that <laughs> you know? and so it was like how can we do this differently and being a voice for that being a voice for diversity and inclusion being a voice for all kinds of things where i thought we were really um we had a responsibility to be a steward of these very intelligent people for 10 to 12 hours of their day you know and so there was a lot of um, energy put into, let's just fix this. Let's change the way we do things. Let's change the way we reward. Let's change the way we, we manage and lead. And so there it was more of a positive thing. I think um, when it was in balance and when I was doing it um, really mindfully, when I wasn't doing it mindfully, it just became this rallying against anyone who didn't agree with me. Uh. <laughs> And so yeah. it was, you know, and I was fighting a hugely entrenched bureaucracy. Mm. And so, um, you know, there was an element of, oh, there she is again. I think I built enough reputation, I got things done. But, you know, there were just people who just wanted standard operating procedure and didn't want to change. And it was too much stress and too much fear. And so because I just drove through things and I got to a position where I could do that, um, I didn't bring the stakeholders on as well as I could have. So mm -hmm. there was an element of uh, a little bit of collateral damage there. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of element of self damage. So mm -hmm. just too much adrenaline, too much stress, too much pushing, mm -hmm. too much driving and fighting an enormous bureaucracy was exhausting. And maybe there was better ways to do it, but I think just doing that would have ended up like this. <laughs> yes. But not balancing it with really the other people have 
other ways. Maybe I could go slower. Maybe I could bring mm. other people in better. It's kind mm. of that social repress thing, you know, mm. doing it one-on-one -on -one with different other leaders and finding people to help, but not doing it as groups and addressing ah. groups in more of a systems way. So right. it, was, it was pretty exhausting. Right. Yeah. In personal relationships, I just would get to points where I'm just frustrated as hell with, with friends and that would lead to resentment and with yeah. family too. And, you know, and it's mostly around take care of yourself because you mm. know, I don't want to have to do it. Ah, uh -huh. my, you know, family where okay. I had, I felt um, that I had to take care of them from the yeah. very early age and did it. And I'm still doing it. And in some ways with a sibling and it was just like, please just take care of yourself. And I have a lot of friends who aren't and they're aging and they don't take care of themselves. And so there's this resentment because I want them to fix themselves. I want them to take care of themselves, you know, and, and it's like, it's their life, you know, and, and yeah, but it's almost like if they don't do it, you will. Yeah. Or you I know have to. you have to. Yeah. You don't have a choice. Yeah. yeah. Yet another thing I have to jump into. And so, right. and of course they don't like that. No one wants to be told. how to run. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's led to problems on both sides of relationships in that way. And right. so it's, it's like really just kind of stopping myself and saying, just accept that own your own part. Right don't own theirs you know right right i want to i want to ask you a little bit about anger i know that anger has a little bit of a different flavor with the one-to-one -one, one than the other two ones the other two ones repress it so much that it's almost like sometimes like often they won't know they're angry yeah. or they deny it they just don't realize it because they're, they're sort of putting it out of awareness and it leaks out in ways but with the one-to-one -one, one there is more direct anger and it's there's almost a sense of way it's okay to be angry sometimes it's it's not so much of a taboo as it is for the other ones even though like you're saying you want to be good and sometimes that that goes against that Can you say a little bit more about what anger has been like for you in that sense and is it okay sometimes to be angry um i intellectually now think it's okay to be angry <laughs> <laughs> So it flares, it flares instantaneously. Mm. And I've learned to say, okay, it's flaring. Is it appropriate to do something about it now? Or is it appropriate to not right. do something about it now? The trouble I had is I had a nine one mother who um, had a horrible childhood where anger scared her because oh. it led to physical abuse. So whenever I would flare, she would look scared and then mm. I would beat myself up. So I spent uh. most of my childhood not expressing it. Wow. And it became, um, you know, the ones have physical tightness in their body, but mm. I had it in steroids to where even massage therapists would be like, I can't do anything with your shoulders. You know? Wow. Wow. So, you know, it was so tight. And because it ha I had to keep it in, I had to keep it in, I had to keep it in. Mm -hmm. and, um, and later, when I was able to find ways and avenues to express it, maybe not to the person, but later, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when there's mm -hmm. primal screams in the backyard or yeah. <laughs> physical, physical activity. I took up racquetball at one point because it was cathartic. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's like then it became, okay, I can express it. But there's still an element of, some of my friends can deal with it and some of them can't. And uh, so I'm always feeling I have to protect other people from me because uh, when it comes up, it's pretty, it's pretty um, powerful. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like I used to, people at work used to laugh because I, when I really would march into a meeting where I knew I had to be the warrior, not the conciliator, mm -hmm. um, I would wear a Mao Zedong scarf. <laughs> <laughs> like a, an Andy Warhol version of him. Not everyone would recognize it, but it was like, okay, this is when I can use it. And I, but, you know, in a mindful, more mindful way. But yeah. it has been a problem because I always feel, especially with a lot of people that I know, they can't take the full force of it. So I've got to really, really, really keep it in. And when I found people who I could, mm -hmm. such a relief. Mm. 
and I had worked with a woman at my old church doing stuff and we would just get into it. I mean, knock out drag outs over something. Right. Mm -hmm. And then through that, there was clarity of exactly the way we needed to go. And we would just walk off and do it. Mm -hmm. And anybody observing that would be scared to death. So it was such a relief for us because we could Mm -hmm. do that without having to worry about how it's going to hurt somebody or impact somebody. Yeah. you and far between people I've met mm-hmm. who I can do that with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Well, I thank you so much. That's so clear. And especially the inner conflict that I think one-to-ones have around their anger because it is so strong and often, like you say, directed toward a noble cause. Yeah. Um, and yet it's, it's hard on you because of that, that, that inner sort of sense of I have to hold this in. No, it's really forceful. It's just there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Um, I'm sure you're, you're going to help a lot of people understand uh, exactly the nature of this subtype. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much.